So the biggest issue with tumor is the tumor hypoxia. It's the factor which makes the cancer more aggressive, it promotes metastasis, it increases cell survival, the cell becomes more resistant to our conventional therapies also. Hyperbaric is actually a very good methodology to decrease hypoxia. Hello everyone and welcome to our another webinar. Uh, uh, and this time the webinar is uh, is done um, under the umbrella of uh, HBOT India, the way we do uh, uh, every month. But uh, in this uh, webinar, we are also associating with another institution with the name Art of Healing Cancer. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Mandeep Singh Malhotra, who is the chief mentor of uh, both HBOT India and Art of Healing Cancer. And the reason we have both these organizations today because we are using the elements of both the organizations where we would be talking about and Dr. Mandeep uh, would be giving us insights around uh, the role of hyperbaric uh, medicine uh, uh, around uh, during uh, chemotherapy, cytotoxic therapies and how uh, hyperbaric oxygen can make uh, the cytotoxic therapies better. Uh, welcome Dr. Mandeep uh, on, this, uh, on this webinar. Along with you, I would also like to welcome all the uh, doctors from our fraternity who have joined this webinar. Uh, welcome everyone to this. Uh, and thanks uh, once again to Dr. Mandeep, to all the doctors who have joined this webinar. Um, Dr. Mandeep, I would request you to take the session from here. And uh, let's begin the insightful session uh, around hyperbaric medicine, chemotherapy, and how overall this could uh, help the cancer patients. Thank you, Arpan. So today's session, actually, we are talking about HBOT, that is hyperbaric medicine and chemotherapy. And uh, we are ourselves inculcating HBOT into our practice. So I am a surgical and a molecular oncologist, and my medong team and my other uh, team members. Now we have started to use HBOT. Uh, in our cancer patients and we are seeing very good results and just a background what actually uh, why HBOT is actually needed in cancer so the biggest issue with cancer is the uh, or tumor is the tumor hypoxia so this tumor hypoxia is is the factor which makes the cancer more aggressive which is one of the more important factors which make which metastasizes the cancer and also it makes the cancer resistant to the treatment maybe in form of uh, chemotherapy or radiation or even immunotherapy so the thing is that as the solid tumors as the cancer mass grows so cancer is what body's own cell which goes wrong so as the tumor grows in size so the cell mass increases so as the cell mass increases so the amount of oxygen for the cell or the cell mass decreases and that is where there are certain areas which are subjected to acute and there are certain areas which are subject, subjected to chronic hypoxia and it varies from cancer to cancer cancer in different patients and how the different patient how every patient reacts and it is due to the uh, structural and functional abnormalities of tumor vasculature since cancer growth often overrides the ability of tumor vasculature or cancer vasculature to adapt the increasing mass and oxygen demand and now there is proven reports which suggest that as the oxygen tension decreases that is hypoxia comes into the picture the more it it basically leads to selection of more resistant malignant cells and uses uh, adaptations in them which fosters tumor progression and also growth it basically increases genetic instability so genetic instability leads to more mutations and these mutations are rather, rather than lead to more aggressive form of cancer and it basically converts the cancer towards from differentiated to undifferentiated which is more aggressive the epithelial to mesenchymal transition occurs in hypoxic conditions which is again a more invasive or metastatic phenotype so basically hypoxia is inducing cancer growth de-differentiation it makes the cancer aggressive it promotes angiogenesis it promotes metastasis it increases cell survival the cell becomes more resistant to the our conventional therapies also and how does the hyperbaric comes into the picture so hyperbaric is actually a very good methodology to decrease hypoxia and we use hyperbaric for 
conditions where wound healing is uh, limited, where we have sensory neural hearing loss, we have stroke and diabetic patients and all. So basically to improve the hypoxia and relieve patients of these conditions. So what is hyperbaric? Hyperbaric is actually we put a patient in pressurized chamber. And in that pressurized chamber, we increase the uh, partial pressure of uh, the patient which is exposed uh, uh, atmospheric pressure to. So we gradually increase to one point. We start with 1.5 ATA. We go to 1.75 to 2.5 to 2. So basically, we are looking at a uh, atmospheric pressure of the uh, which the body is subjected to is around 2.5 to 2, uh, 2.75. So between 2.25 to 2.75 is the pressure which we are looking at specifically in cancer patients. So this is basically uh, the concept is under normal atmospheric conditions, 97% of our hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen, and this is the main a mechanism to deliver oxygen to the tissues whereas the plasma that is the liquid part in which the blood plasma so only 32 uh, percent or 0.32 percent of dissolved oxygen it contains so as we increase the pressure so it is henry's law the when we increase the pressure the dissolvability of gas in the liquid increases so the dissolvability of oxygen in the blood plasma increases Thus, HBOT does not have any large effect on oxygen delivery via red blood cells. And it is independent of hemoglobin uh, transport system. So, basically, when you increase the uh, partial pressure, the dissolvability of uh, oxygen in the uh, blood plasma increases. This leads to increased partial pressure of the oxygen in the tissues. So, the oxygen content of the tissue increases. So, there is high oxygen in the tissues and also this oxygen basically diffuses from the plasma to the interstitial fluid and it is very easily be it is very easily reachable to the cells which are hypoxic rather than the system of going through hemoglobin and then getting dissolved so this is like you already have a gradient so there's a hypoxic gradient the oxygen is less in the tissues of demand so the oxygen re reaches through the uh, blood plasma so it dissolves from liquid to liquid and ultimately reaches the cell which which is needing the oxygen and also it has the additional benefits of refining the elasticity of red blood cells and also reducing platelet aggregation so basically it increases the tumor vascular permeability and there are a lot of myths which have been around hbot so I'll just take you through them chronologically. So in 1966, uh, Johnson and uh, Lachlan, they raised a concern that HBOT might have a metastatic potential. So basically, malignancy is considered contraindication for HBOT. And since uh, oxygen at rate pressure might enhance the tumor growth. So it has been feared that HBOT would have proliferative effects in cancer. Thus, for many decades, the focus of HBOT was that it might enhance the cancer growth. But in early 2000s, Fieldmare et al. and Daruwala et al. So they reviewed the literature of HBOT and cancer, and conclusion in both the reviews was that HBOT did not promote cancer, and use of HBOT in cancer patients was very safe. There were uh, there has been two in vitro studies conducted on one mammary cell lines and another in oral cancer cell lines. So one by uh, the mammary one has been conducted by Granovitz et al. And soon et al. has conducted the oral cancer cell lines and both of them have shown change in apoptosis, which is basically increased apoptosis after HPO. Shane et al. has observed that even they have gone into the molecular pathway and they are in which they found that the apoptotic MAPK pathway was increased whereas the anti-apoptotic ERK pathway was decreased. Now, uh, Moen et al. again in their review found that when the mammary cell lines was exposed to HBOT, it, it, they also noticed a change in histology. So basically, the cancers who were poorly differentiated, they started be becoming differentiated or the histology started becoming better. Then uh, there is a study by uh, Kawase et al. And Peng et al. on osteosarcoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma, respectively, and both suggest inhibition of cell division after HBOT. 
and it has been also seen in various uh, studies on mammary cell lines and glioma that HPOT has anti-angiogenic effect. So there is a recent study which was uh, done by Shao Shen et al. And this was basically uh, published uh, in the nature's uh, uh, section of the uh, cell lines uh, of the uh, cell biology uh, journal. And it showed that uh, the HBOT, there was no change in VEGF expression. So VEGF, obviously, we understand that uh, is the uh, main uh, cancer pathway which causes the uh, angiogenesis. So HBOT did not have any increase in VEGF rather than the CD31. So CD31 is the platelet's endothelial cell addition molecule, that is PCAM, which was upregulated. So it means that VEGF was, there was no effect on the VEGF, whereas CD31 was high. So basically more immune cells and macrophages could have, would be recruited to the cancer uh, uh towards the cancer and uh, immune cells would help and it would help in clearing the cancer cells and the can and the uh debris and then when we talk about chemo resistance so obviously when there is high hypoxia so there is altered cellular uh, metabolism and so basically chemotherapy actually requires reactive oxygen species so the redox state is the is towards uh reduction meaning the oxygen is less and obviously the drug cytotoxicity basically decreases and uh, so first of all the effectiveness of chemotherapy decreases and hypoxia actually causes genetic instability as discussed previously and it leads to more resistant cell lines so there was a study by al Veli et al which summarized that hbo could improve and help overcome chemotherapeutic resistance which in, by, increasing, by increasing both tissue perfusion and cellular sensitivity. So they showed that enhanced uh, chemotherapeutic effect by HPOT on uh, the various chemotherapy drugs. The mammary model studied by Mohen et al, they had a very significant study in which they showed that chemotherapy effect is increased immediately after the HPOT. So basically, if we are able to give the HPOT at the appropriate time, that is when the uh, chemotherapy's half-life or chemotherapy's uh, uh, blood levels are appropriate level, at that point, HPOT would definitely, if we administer it accordingly, so chemotherapy would be more effective and it would cause better cancer control. And that is what we follow in our protocol also. We are basically looking at uh, cancer patients and when we are uh, giving them chemotherapy, we are uh, looking at the half-life of chemotherapy drugs. And if we are using HWOT, we are trying to uh, add HWOT during the half-life of the specific drug which we have administered. And also there was a study on non-small cell uh, lung cancer patients in which they combined hyperthermia and HWOT with taxol and platinum. And again, they found very good results. The Kawase study on osteosarcoma again had showed that the effect of carboplatin was enhanced. And also, uh, there is a uh, ovarian cancer xenograft model which suggested that cisplatin's effect was also significantly enhanced. There was a study on colorectal uh, patients in liver mates which suggested that HBOT enhanced the combination of SMA and para. Rubicin. And this is a significant study by Carls et al. in 1990s, which suggested that if we add HBOT to the uh, prostate cancer patients, for specifically those under Taxol and Doxorubicin, that led to decrease in rate and growth of tumor. And this they had showed in uh, prostate cancers. And it's specifically, again, the chemosensitive portion of the cell cycle. So basically, when you are adding the HBOT to the chemotherapy, it would make a difference. So consensus is that there is a lot of research which has uh, now shown that has failed to demonstrate that HBOT has any cancer-promoting effect or it enhances recurrence rather than it can be inhibitory and reduce cancer growth in some cancer types and in very certain situations. 
Now, Mayer et al. has listed five chemotherapy agents, which obviously increase the toxicity during HBOT. So these are doxorubicin, bleomycin, platinum, disulfiram, and mephenite uh, uh, drugs. So the thing is that, as we all understand, so the drugs, chemotherapy also, the toxicity is higher when the effect is higher. So when we potentiate the drugs, so their adverse effects might also increase. So in these patients specifically who are looking at bleomycin, we should look into pulmonary fibrosis, which we do look into it. And when we are looking into platinum, we see what is the uh, renal reserve. If the patients who are compromised renal reserve or compromised pulmonary reserve with patients of bleomycin, renal reserve with platinum, so we would prefer not to use HBOT in these patients. And this is a latest random randomized trial which was uh, published in the Indian Journal of Surgery in 2020. And it is done by Rijita and uh, Dr. Uh, Samir Shah. And in which they have looked into adding, uh, they have compared the efficacy of HBOT with neojuvent versus neojuvent alone for breast cancer. And the patient was, uh, were, they, this is a randomized study. So the patients were randomly allocated in, in two groups. One NSET with HBOT, the other with only NSET. The drugs used were cyclophosphamide, 5 fluorouracil and epirubicin. And HBOT was administered along with chemotherapy in three sessions. So again, the importance is when we are uh, adding the HBOT to the, to the chemotherapy sessions. And after three cycles, the patient, were under, uh, the patient were taken for surgery. And what they found was that there was a significantly higher reduction of tumor volume in patients who were receiving HBOT. And it is like 43.1% uh, was the tumor reduction. And, and in some patients, one more than 80% tumor reduction was seen if specifically in patients who had HBOT with chemotherapy. And that was clearly statistically significant also. And this is an Indian study on Indian patients of breast cancer. So this is another important paper in which uh, initially uh, in 2015, Wang et al. had shown that HBOT would be not very good or promote malignant growth in glioma specifically. So this is again a study by Wang et al. in Nature Cell Discovery, May, May 2021 in which they have shown that HIF alpha and HIF2 alpha are highly expressed in glioblastoma cells, uh, glioblastoma multiform, uh, multiform cancer cells, which are under hypoxia. And both HIF alpha and HIF2 alpha, uh, HIF1 alpha and 2 alpha are inhibited by HBOT. So basically what happens is that the HBOT, uh, the cell cycle is arrested in G1, so which is arrested cell is the more resistant cell. So when you add HBOT, the cell from G1 goes to G2M phase. So when it goes to G2M phase, the tumor growth uh, increases. And also under hypoxia, stemness is higher, which leads to chemo resistance. So what, when you add HBOT, the stemness is actually decreased. And they have shown that uh, by adding HBOT, the stemness is inhibited by inhibition of both HIF1 alpha, 2 alpha and SOX. So SOX is again a marker, is a very important marker of stemless and SOX is also found to be decreased. So the thing is that according to Wang et al, HBOT alone obviously is not suitable, but HBOT in combination is a much better way to cure and improve patient prognosis, detailing the mechanism that is its inhibition of HIF1 alpha, 2 alpha and SOX. So basically, it decreases hypoxia, it decreases stemness, it makes chemotherapy more sensitive. So the conclusion of what we found and what we are also practicing is that HBOT alone is not something which uh, we practice. There are a lot of studies which say that in solid tumors, it is, uh, it is not harmful. But the thing is that uh, the best way to use HBOT is to uh, inculcate it with the chemotherapy and uh, the chemotherapy regime and it has to be inculcated when the uh, bio, bio levels or our, our drug levels are at the maximum so that the chemotherapy more, becomes more effective that is the cytotoxicity is the drug cytotoxicity is enhanced by increasing reactive oxygen species. 
the cell lines from the undifferentiated become towards the differentiated the uh, 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 the uh, epithelial melanchymal transmission is reversed from mesial chylan to epithelial transmission and also the immune cells are potentiated to clear the residual cancer and its debris. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mandeep, uh, for the insightful session. Uh, I would now request uh, the doctors who have joined to uh, share if they have any queries uh, and we would love uh, to answer those questions. So, Dr. Mandeep, uh, you know, uh, uh, by the time we are receiving these queries, one of the questions that is often asked uh, by some of the doctors and the patient communities is that, uh, uh, is there any selection criteria uh, for any specific cancer patients to use hyperbaric uh, or uh, or basically the research that has happened, you're suggesting that it, it could be given to any cancer patient during chemotherapy? Basically, my practice is limited to solid tumors. Okay. So definitely in uh, solid tumors, uh, there's a lot of research which has happened around breast, breast, this like Indian study, which is a randomized study. Then uh, head and neck cancers, ovarian cancers, and there are certain studies around colorectal cancers. But if you look into other cancers, still the data is not mature. So majority of these cancers definitely we are looking at adding h -pot. and specifically in other cancers when the patient comes to us in refractory phases advanced phases refractory phases when the drugs are not working cancer is progressing so when in those conditions we add h -bot, we normally see good results so what we are actually doing is that we are using uh, high dose iv vitamin c during our chemotherapy that we normally add in pre-medication itself so uh, high dose IV vitamin C also potentiates the reactive oxygen species. It uh, basically inhibits the uh, limited catalyst in the uh, tumor cells. So uh, when you add chemotherapy and over that, if we inc increase the ROS by h pot, so basically it becomes a double cocktail. And that is how it becomes very, very effective. And yes, we do keep a watch on the adverse effects. And uh, if we find that uh, the patient is uh, certainly if the patient is a renal patient or a limited uh, lung volumes, so we would avoid that in these patients. Right. Otherwise, and, uh, we find very right. good results. We concur with the results shown in the randomized control trial for breast cancers. Now, for a uh, uh, specifically for a triple negative breast cancers, we are getting ninety percent CR rates after we are adding h -pod. so this is like still nine months but yes. 90 percent is men's well we have, we haven't expected such kind of rates brilliant brilliant, brilliant. so dr mandi uh, should we also uh, uh, another question that comes very often is that uh, generally uh, you know uh, worldwide in some of the you know hospitals uh, uh, hyperbaric medicine is generally suggested when the di when the disease has metastasized or the disease is refractory so what's the ideal uh, scenario uh, of using hyperbaric? So can it be used in early stages also? My side, it should be used actually in all the stages. So whenever we are looking at cytotoxic therapy, we should be looking at collaborating with HPOT. Because cytotoxic therapy itself is a very, it's not a very pleasant situation. And also there's a limited amount of cytotoxic therapy which somebody can tolerate. And also there is, we cannot go on giving chemotherapy, right? And so if I have to give six cycles, if I can achieve a similar result by four cycles, obviously I would take it and my patient would take it. Absolutely, why not? Yeah. Right. And uh, Dr. Mandi, one of the questions that we've just received is that, that there has been, uh, uh, there has been, uh, uh, you know this uh, thought that you know with hyperbaric uh, you know uh, and with the standard dosages of chemotherapy we might have you know with, with merging both the you know the therapies together we might have uh, uh, side effects you know uh, impact of chemotherapy might increase so how much is, is that true and what's the what's the scenario of that so normally when we are using hyperbaric we are just not using hyperbaric so we are adding high dose iv vitamins he has suggested I, so vitamin C itself also decreases side effects. 
we are adding mistletoe which is known to decrease the adverse effects of chemotherapy after uh, the half life we are adding nutraceuticals also which is again helping decreasing the adverse effects so definitely we select our patients carefully but once selected so we are not looking at patients who are as previously suggested that if i'm looking at doxorubicin or bleomycin i would not take a patient who is whose lung systems or pulmonary systems are compromised and if we are looking into platinums we are not taking any patients who are whose uh, gfr or creatinine or urea or in diabetes is borderline so we will definitely not take these patients but for all other patients this i haven't felt that there is a huge increase in adverse effects so it's more it, or less it, similar yeah so is it more safe to say that uh, 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 that you know we could use uh, hyperbaric with with not every chemotherapy but but with some of those like how does what does the literature say basically hyperbaric can be used with all the chemotherapies especially cytotoxic chemotherapies but hyperbaric can uh, can cannot cannot be used for all patients so we have to select patients carefully yeah. okay. that is the thought depending on the condition of the patient condition uh, of the patient yeah 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 so all whether right. the patient would be happy to, to go if somebody is claustrophobic obviously this i cannot give hyperbaric yeah 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 that's true that's true you spoke uh, dr mandeep about uh, the mistletoe therapy which has a resemblance to immunotherapy so though we know that our topic today is cytotoxic toxic therapy but that the how how, how where, where is the science heading uh, with immunotherapy then like with hyper uh, with with hyperbaric oxygen so as hyperbaric we were uh, so there was uh, this is a latest study by uh, uh, shen et al which is again a uh, cell biology nature publication this is 2021 study in which they have found that CD31 is increased. So when CD31 is increased, so obviously this is the uh, adhesion molecule. So it would bind the immuno, immune cells. So it, it helps to T cells to stay there or go towards the cancer. So if I'm adding a checkpoint inhibitor, and uh, so I would prefer that my, uh, uh, so basically I'm potentiating my T cell with a checkpoint inhibitor. So my T cell, so I would have, I would have more number of T cells going towards the, the cancer where it's actually needed. And then mm -hmm. once the uh, checkpoint inhibitor start, then comes into the function, function and T cell basically then eliminates the cancer cell. Also the antibody dependent cytotoxicity of our immune system again is dependent on the reactive oxygen species. So if I have more, uh, uh, uh oxide radicals superoxide radicals so my immune, immune immune system becomes more active and my immunotherapy becomes more active that's so true that is so true one last question dr mandeep that we have uh, from the audience is that uh, is there a way to measure hypoxia within the patients and then decide which patient to give to be given maybe a higher atmospheric pressure or a lower atmospheric pressure uh, so is there a way to measure that so we had a lot of discussions with our nuclear medicine colleagues. So uh, previously they were Mercosol derivatives which were available, which were used to measure hypoxia and they used to use it for radiation planning. But for uh, some time now the Mercosol derivatives are not available. So a person, nuclear medicine person who is who good, very good and with experience, in using uh, fluorodeoxyglucose, they can give a fair bit of idea around the uh, hypoxia of tumor hypoxia and the uh, even the metastatic sites which are more hypoxic. But yes, it needs a lot of experience from the nuclear medicine fraternity to help us decipher which which is the patient which has more level of hypoxia and which would benefit more with the addition of h -board, but that is mainly limited towards the uh, advanced stage cancers all right and now we are looking at even adding we are looking at adding routine and we do use it for last some time uh, adding uh, h to our even uh, initial stages 
but in advanced stages if i am able to understand that this cancer has more element of hypoxia so even if that patient is relatively compromised i would definitely help to i would look into add hbot with some support that is how i would take that but yes right now it's slightly difficult there are few in of one or two of our colleagues which help us do that and i'm sure patients who would uh, want to, eva- to be evaluated for that would connect with you and uh, you know discuss their uh, you know uh, possibility of taking hyperbaric oxygen with the uh, chemotherapy so i think we do not have uh, many more questions here on dr mandeep uh, thank you so much for the time that you have spared as we, as, I, as i said during the beginning of the session i'm sure this session would be insightful and so it has been uh we have learned a lot uh, we've answered a lot of questions uh, from the audience uh, from the doc- from our medical fraternity so thank you everyone uh, all the doctors who have joined this session uh, we look forward to inviting you in our series of next sessions on hyperbaric medicine uh, next month we will be conducting uh, another session uh, uh, another session on uh, uh, stem cell transplant during liquid malignancies and how hyperbaric medicine helps in that Uh, we would love everyone to join that session as well and uh, broadly increase the knowledge and awareness of uh, hyperbaric medicine so thank you very much everyone who have joined this session thank you so much dr mandeep for your time support and support and effort uh, in uh, in setting this up today uh, and looking forward to seeing you on our upcoming webinars as well thank you so much and have a great day ahead